This is a duplex mineral jig. This is made by Riverdance Gold Mining right here in Alaska in Wasilla by me. And this is patent pending. This is a the first, the world's first truly portable mineral jig. It weighs 15 pounds. It runs on a 12 volt DC power supply and uh, water supply. And really the water supply is just just needs to be enough pressure to fill this and overflow it. There needs there does not need to be a water flow like over a sluice box or a, a bolt cube or something like that. You just need enough water flow to overflow the machine. So a uh, regular garden hose will work. I use a submersible pump um, and the, the amount of pressure you need varies widely. Uh, you really don't have to, it's going into a half inch pipe. So that control, that basically a, a regulator built into it. Does anybody, before I get started, anybody a miner here? Anybody in the group experience gold mining? do it full-time or have in the past or just ambitious and uh, excited about gold mining? Anybody never gold mined before? Okay, that's pretty common. Lots of folks that uh, haven't but are interested and in, uh, I know why because gold mining is pretty cool. It's exciting. Um, once you see that first glimmer of gold, you'll be hooked, trust me. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to start this thing. It is super simple. Can you hook up a hose? I think everybody can do that, and I made it even easier. This is a quick disconnect on a garden hose. All you gotta do is pop it on, like so. Can you hook up alligator clips to a 12 volt battery? Yep, it's pretty simple to do, and can you press a button? There's one button to turn this thing on and turn it off. There are no knobs to twist, uh, valves to open and close. You don't have to regulate the water. You don't have to regulate the speed of the motor. It's all preset, it is good to go. I'm going to hook up the alligator clips from my pump. All right, and so sitting over here on the table, I have a power supply from a Dewalt battery uh, power tool and this converter. This is an alternate power supply. If you want me to put one of these on there so you can just pop in your Dewalt batteries, I will do that. I did it for a guy in Kotsubu, it worked very well for him. He likes to carry around the fucking batteries currently. Um, but that's a good good solution for folks. I'm going to check the valve real quick to make sure I, my pump my, yeah, it's okay. I'm going to turn on my pump. It would be pretty anticlimactic if nothing happens. All right. No, go ahead. Go ahead. It's uh, already registered at the patent office, so it's protected. It's not a secret. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding steel shot, quarter inch steel balls to the tray. This creates a bedding, it's also called dragging. And what this is going to do is as the machine, these diaphragms are pushed up and down and the cells are filled with water, the water is gonna push these balls up and apart, creating space for the gold to drop down. And anything that's, that gold is the heaviest material that's gonna be introduced, so gold is gonna fall down to the screen, and every downstroke pulls them down through the screen or traps them against the screen when the balls are pulled down and together. And it does that 300 times a minute. So just like gold panning, when you put gravel in your gold pan, you fill it full of water and you shake it, it puts all the material into suspension. The gold can sink to the bottom of the tray. That's exactly what's happening in here 300 times a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick the water on. Water's gonna start flowing out of the discharge tubes at the bottom and into the concentrates bucket. Water's gonna fill the hutches. Those are these bodies in the center of the jig. Up through the screen, up through the jig shot and overflow out the front. And check this out, it's very low flow, right? It's not, not it's not pouring out of there quickly. There's, you could drop a leaf in here and it would just slowly flow out. So there's not a need for a lot of water pressure to run one of these things, much less than a sluice box. I'm gonna start the jigging action and actually I'm gonna get my, here, up here, first. Okay, so this is the digging action. 
It's just pumping those diaphragms up and down repeatedly, 300 times a minute. One of the biggest selling points for me with a mineral jig is you do not have to, you can feed material into them very quickly. Because there's no water flow, or very, very reduced water flow compared to other machines, this material has a chance to sink down. As you introduce the heavy material, it sinks, displaces the lighter material, it keeps pushing it out the front. The heavy material has 300 opportunities every minute to sink down to the tray or down through the screen. And if you watch it as I introduce it, you can see it kind of just stay in place and sink. And when I put this next scoop in, if you want to, put your fingers in there and feel the jigging action. Okay. Put your fingers right down in there and you can feel it moving all that material kind of, it's just dropping lower and lower and lower. And it, as you keep feeding material in there, it's continuously cleaning out. It's not gonna fill up and clog. Uh, it's just gonna keep feeding it in there. Although, you might have a problem over here. I have, it's recirculating. Yeah. I have another, but it's flowing into the tub in front of it. Thank you, though. That would be pretty terrible. How long would you be comfortable running before you cleaned out, say, the buried material was like that's, that? That's a great question. When do you clean it out? Uh, pretty much whenever you want to. If you, if you, See the steel shot coming out. That means heavier material is pushing it out. And there shouldn't be anything heavier in there than gold. So you either have a, something weird's happening, and science is not working, or there's a lot of gold in the, in the tray. Or you're not on level ground, and it's took too much. Um, you really do need to have it fairly level in order for it to be really efficient. So in theory, you would run it yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's self-cleaning, so you can just kind of run it all day until your concentrate bucket is full. That's really the, the limit there. I'm going to wash this out a little bit. Actually, I'm going to spray you guys if I do that. You might worry that if you had a lot of fine wall at the bottom, and have water pumped up through it, and float back up, but I guess you put enough shot in there that it doesn't pass through. The gold, it doesn't matter. So the size of the gold doesn't matter. It has a specific gravity. It's, yep. Its density is what keeps it down. And you know, the, the shot does help with that. But this, so a jig actually, believe it or not, the jigging action helps break the surface tension of the water. Gold, like any heavy metal, is hydrophobic. And, uh, it will float if given the opportunity, if it's small enough or flat enough. But a jig, the, the jigging action is constantly uh, attacking that surface tension. And so if you have a recirculating system like I do, I have to factor in there to keep the water clean. That also breaks the surface tension of the water. But a jig, in principle, will technically break the surface tension all on its own. Okay, so now I'm done introducing dirt. I'm just letting it run for a second. If you want to take a look and see what it looks like. All this material up on the top, there's no gold in that. All the gold is down in the bottom of the tray. You can swish it out if you want to. But if you reach down in there, you'll feel in this first tray, there's barely any material other than the steel shot. There's, there's material in there. But this front tray is where most of the light material has, has uh, migrated to because we kept introducing back here. I'm going to turn it off. And turn the water off. I'm going to leave. myself We're going to leave the pump hooked up because I'm going to use the hose. I have a spray hose hooked up. And I'm going to turn this valve off that I turned on before or we are going to make a mess in just a minute. All right, as soon as water stops draining up the bottom, I'm gonna disconnect that hose, and I'll upend this into a bucket, and we'll start to see, you should be able to see how much gold is trapped on the tray, like I said it would be, right? Okay, so the water stopped, I'm going to disconnect that. I love these quick disconnects, so much easier. And I have a clean tray here. Watch your hand for just a second, please. 
Thank you. By the way, this is built with a little lip here. It is meant for your battery to sit there and you can strap it to the machine if you want to. Uh, and this bar here is for the back of the battery, but it's also perfect for mounting this adapter as well. So, options. Okay. So here we go, take a look in there, and there's gold stuck all in that first tray. There's a little bit at the front of the second tray. Yeah, a little bit maybe to the front. Yeah. There's quite a bit of gold there. There's gold down in here. Uh, so maybe make it icy some there. I'm gonna watch this out real quick and we'll be able to see how much gold we got there. And then we'll check the concentrates bucket as well. And you'll see just how little material there is in this machine. I could run buckets and buckets and buckets and you'd never have more material to deal with than was trapped in the top of this tray. There would be more in the concentrates bucket below for your minus fraction. But uh, if you target it correctly, and you put your screen to capture the most gold, then you're going to never have more than this fraction. So let me turn this back on. And I close the right valve because I'm not getting sprayed with water. That's good. We'll just briefly rinse this out. If you, at the end of the day, you want to clean this out really good because there's going to be flakes that are just big enough to get trapped in the screen and not quite go through because they're not all perfectly square or round. Um, and there are little lips and crevices here and there that gold can get trapped on. So you want to make sure to get it all out of there. I prefer for the final clean out to take the four mount bolts on the top and the two mount bolts on the rocker arm and pull the whole center section out and clean it out that way. But for our purposes right now, I'm just gonna get most of the gold out. And real quick, I'm going to take these caps off so this can drain out and clean out the center of the touches real quick. Get all the sand that was in the inside that passed through the screen that hadn't quite made it out yet. Get that into our concentrated bucket. Okay. Now we're going to take this and get all the steel out and it'll take a few seconds. So I'm going to move this hose around here and I'm going to grab these two buckets and try not to spray anybody. Stay right where you are. You don't have to get out of my way. And just like this. Okay, put this in here. So I pre-screened the material. I pre-screened to quarter it. I use the same classifying screen to classify the material before I put it into the jib. And then when I'm ready to clean it out, all the material can pass through the screen except these quarter-inch steel balls. So it's a really easy way to clean out and separate all the material from the steel shot. It took the steel shot out of here. Okay, and I do this in three stages so I don't so up uh, all the, the balls don't come out of the holes and you can still get stuff onto it. And you're not going to lose any gold unless you skim through with your water or your too rough with your shaking. Okay. I think you're going to be pretty impressed with how much gold actually comes out of here.
little bit. Okay, and I said 30 mesh, this is the 60 mesh unit, so there will be a little more fines in the in the tray than there would be in the 30 mesh unit, but there's gonna be a lot less concentrates in the bucket underneath for a minus fraction. Okay. Here we go. I'm just going to get rid of some of these rocks so you can see just how much gold there really is trapped in here. And I'll show you when I back pan this in just a second. I'll bring it right out there for everybody to see. When you're panning, please be careful. Don't go as fast as I'm going because this is pretty reckless. All right. Should start to see gold. I can already see some. Looking at quite a bit. And this is all gold that I found here in Alaska, just going around to different creeks and streams, culverts. Um, I found gold in every place I looked. Some of it was really tiny, only a teeny bit, but I, I always found gold, at least one or two pieces everywhere I went. Some places I found it. There's just lots in there. We're getting down towards the bottom, so more and more. If I pan that out, there'd be a nice big gold ring at the top. Quite a bit, right? So I'm going to leave that here, and then we're going to look at the minus fraction. And please stand back because I can't do this without making a little bit of a mess. So, because this is a, it's a flimsy tub, just like that one. Try to get a little bit of water out first. Good enough. You'll have to pan a little bit, but you'll never have more than that in the top tray for your plus fraction. You'll never have more than that because more dirt can't fit in the tray. So, and it will not evacuate the gold unless it's smaller than the screen and then it goes down into your concentrates bucket. And I think you're going to be really impressed with how little concentrates came through how little there is in this minus fraction. It's really almost nothing. So look at that. It's just really this pile right here, a little bit right there. I'm going to quick put this into a pan and uh, We'll see what we have for the 60 and smaller fraction. So again, this is one, one machine. It does all this in one step. Then there's a little bit for you to do, but I think you'll agree that compared to pretty much anything else, the amount of concentrates that you have to deal with are going to be less. You're, gonna, you're not going to miss any gold is the, the best part of it. Okay, let's, let's pan this a little bit and see what we have in this really small fraction. So sometimes, so 60 is pretty small. You might be able to see the gold or it might be too small. I don't know. It's, yeah. Sometimes the gold is so small it's hard to see. Not a gold guy. Not a gold guy? I'm at the cell. All right, let's check this out. Oh, good job. Here we go. Jake is doing what I'm doing. 300 times a minute. It's unsettling it and then settling it. Giving the gold every opportunity to, to settle up. So, right, I'm already starting to see gold. I see a couple little pieces. 
since we see some up here. Let's oh, no, keep interpreting more and more as you go here. It's small, but you can see it, especially against that black sand. It really stands out. One cool thing about gold, if you've never, if you don't know much about, or you haven't been around gold too much, it always has a sheen. So if you're not sure if it's gold, cover it with a shadow. And if it still glimmers, then it's gold. Uh, fool's gold will, and, and mica, and things that have a gleam to it, that look like gold initially because the light is on it. When you cover it in a shadow, they get dull. Gold doesn't. It always has that shimmer to it. Kind of starting to look like the night sky there. There's quite a bit of fine gold. I could just keep going, um, but I'll let you guys take a look at that if you want. Yeah, lots of gold in there. Lots of pieces. See all those tiny pieces? Did you guys see the bigger pieces? There's bigger pieces in this one over here. Look at this. You can see these really easy. Look at all that gold. See all those big pieces? Look at that big sucker right there. Look how big that is. Cool, huh? Yeah. Okay, so that's that's it. This is the 60 mesh River Dance Mini Jig. This uh, separates the gold, separates material by size and specific gravity, and it does it very well. It's very forgiving. If you're a novice or good at, uh, you have a lot of experience gold mining, you're gonna have the same results. Um, that's what it is. It's very simple. We're here till close, 10 o'clock.